Hey you guys, we good? Of course we are. One second here, let me get everything settled in. Alright, so uh, welcome to my talk. It is on uh, embracing the state to free your soul. And that may sound a little paradoxical, and trust me, it is. It took me a long time to figure it out. And I still haven't got it figured out. I don't think any of us really do. But uh, we're getting close. It's getting really close. It's a good feeling. Uh, so anyways, to get on to the topic at hand, um, basically, what it is that I'm talking about today, holistic agorism, and uh, before I start, I'd really just like to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Jane Wolfert. Uh, I was born in New Braunfels, Texas, a little German community, uh, and as soon as I could, I could move to Austin. Um, Austin, I think, is one of the freeze in the world right now, and it will continue to be for a good amount of time. And, uh, if you're not, uh, moving there at any point, or if you're not considering at least visiting yourself a disfavor. Um, but anyways, enough about that. Um, I'd like to tell you about a little bit where I came from. Uh, politically, um, at first, uh, I really didn't, really didn't really know anything about politics. And then uh, my parents told me I was a conservative. Wasn't really very comfortable with that for very long. Uh, moved towards the independent spectrum. Uh, and then when I came to Austin, um, I was under the influence of the libertarians in town. And they're good people. Uh, I like libertarians a lot. I have a lot of connection with them. Um, and I actually fell into uh, a group known as Libertarian Longhorns. And they actually happen to be very anarchist-leaning. Anarcho-capitalist. And uh, anarcho-capitalist for a while, and then I just said, hey, why not just be an anarchist? But, you know, then I, then I discovered something called agorism. And I actually uh, was an agorist until about a few weeks ago. Uh, or more. <coughs> <coughs> and then uh, I moved on to something called holisticism, which is basically right around where I am now. I'm actually moved beyond that, but I might as well talk about uh, what I know and what I don't know. Um, so what is agorism? Agorism is basically a philosophy that was, uh, uh, theorized about by Samuel Konkin, uh, early, uh, I believe it was the 70s, mid-70s, correct me if I'm wrong about that. Uh, but he, Samuel wrote this thing called the New Libertarian Manifesto, which is basically, uh, the creed for agorists that tells you how to practice agorism. And I read that uh, not too long ago, and I really enjoyed it, got a lot out of it, realized I was actually doing a lot of what agorism is already. I think most of us already are agorists, know it. Um, but basically, agorism is counter-economics. Um, that's how, that's kind of what uh, is actually speaking right now. He kind of added that to, uh, to Samuel Konkin's uh, original document. Got to add that influence of counter uh, which is basically uh, subverting the state by removing yourself from the state economically. Uh, uh, so we would be practicing black market economics. Uh, it's kind of like white market versus black market economics, and I would fall into the black market. And uh, so what's the problem with that? Well, there really isn't a problem, uh, per se, uh, but then everything is practically black or white. Uh, instead, everything's really shades of gray. I think we all know this. We see this in science. We see this in nature, in art. I mean, it's very hard to get a perfect red color or a perfect white color or anything. Perfection. Perfection is a good thing to strive for, but uh, we only know now and we really don't know much of anything. And so... Uh, for me, what's worked is I come up with this new, uh, I've added to agorism, I've added on the word holistic in front of them. And essentially, what holistic agorism does is it combines the uh, traditional agorist theory. Uh, where are we here? Oh yeah, 
yeah, basically, it just adds the word holistic. It's that simple, really. Um, and then, and I think in order to subvert the state, really have to uh, embrace it. And that you might be saying, what the hell is this guy talking about? I would have said the same thing a few weeks ago. Uh, but I really didn't know how to explain it a few weeks ago. And I still might not be able to explain it to some people. But I can only do the best I can here. Um, and it's Basically, we must live by our creed. What works best for you? Um, I think Samuel Conkin had a lot of things right, but uh, that he might have been missing out on here is that everybody has their own idea of what uh, the black market is. But before I get into that, I'd like to explain the nuts and bolts of agorism uh, so we can kind of redefine it. Um, as I said before, agorism is kind of counter it's the black market economics to what we consider the white market economics. And... Uh, Samuel Conkin said in his uh, New Libertarian Manifesto that it was in stages. Um, in order for agorism to work, there must be a radical change uh, via a paradigm shift. And uh, the problem with that is, is that, like, if we're trying to really strive for, you know, the ideal right now, we don't know what that is, and so if we're really trying to be over-idealistic, that can lead to frustration, it can lead to sickness, it can even lead to cancer. If we really, really are trying to be over-idealistic, we're going to get frustrated. And so we have to evolve by looking at the whole picture. That's what I mean by holistically. Um, we have to evolve holistically toward that agorist paradigm. And agorism defines four faith you have the low-density agorist society, which I believe we're already past. Uh, I believe we moved past that a long, long time ago. And in fact, we might even that was. Um, stage two is the mid-density, small condensation agorist society. Uh, I believe we've also moved past this. Uh, I believe we're actually in the third stage right now. And when I mean we, I mean the people who are probably listening in now. I don't think most people are in the stage. But the people who are going to be bringing us into the fourth stage are. And basically, we're in a high, large condensation agorist society. And I think a lot of people who are listening into this conference don't even realize how much agorist activity is going on right now around us. I mean, in Austin, I'm aware of the huge counter-economic uh, ec economic activity that's happening around us. And the funny thing I realized is that, like, none of these people are actually breaking their own creed. They're not breaking the law. They're all staying within the law of what they, what they define as. And really, for the most part, the state, most of the laws that the state has written down in code right now are lawful. We have to realize that. The state is basically there to test us, us, the people in the third stage already, as to whether or not we are really ready to accept freedom. And I don't think most people have been ready to accept freedom until now. And uh, it's basically any more free than this, so we better embrace it, right? Um, and we're rapidly entering, we're going to be entering the fourth stage very soon. And so it's up to us, well, what really is freedom? And so we really have to live in the moment. Live how we were meant to live. And uh, this fourth stage is the agri society. And Samuel Conkin writes, which I think he's very accurate on here, he says there are going to be statist impurities. Um, basically, all he's saying is, look, we're never be completely rid of the state. It will exist, but the idea is, in this fourth stage, which we're entering very soon, is it's so small it doesn't even matter. It's not how the... the the, the state will basically just be a figurehead, you know, literally a figurehead. And in Great Britain, it's she doesn't have any power. She still exists. It's basically tradition, you know. A lot of tradition is uh, basically just impurity. Um, and so what does holistic agorism actually add? What do I mean by that? What can we actually do? Uh, with holistic agorism. Well, the old agorist creed, uh, Samuel Conkin and uh, Neil J. Shulman and previous ag maybe they've already figured this out too, but the previous creed has been three things. It's been agora, anarchy, and action. But we already have those things, so what can we add on top of that? 
Well, we can add a fourth dimension here, a fourth word that starts with the letter A, and it's basically a more, which is, when you translate that, uh, love. Embrace the secrets of love is all I'm saying here. It's that simple. Love is all you need. And I think uh, that's that's even wrong. That's how simple it is. It's out there in the open right now. Just go and take it. It's ready for you. Uh, there's no good or bad. There's only right or wrong. And this right or wrong is our eth our code. What is your what is your ethical code that you want to live by? Go ahead and live by that. And look at agri in your environment. This is a big big problem that I had that I struggle with and I'm still struggling with to some small degree. Um, to know what environment and what what moment are you in right now think about that moment but in that thinking don't really think at all because when you're in the moment you're there there's nothing to think about there's nothing to know you just do you just be as you are uh basically there's no fight anymore we shouldn't be fighting the state just embrace where you are in the moment don't fight and if you can don't always just do it out in the open. All right. It sounds cryptic, but it's really not. I've already told you everything you need to know. Uh, I, I'm a brick anymore. Um, and I'd, I'd be surprised if there's any questions. And I'm, actually, I'm trying to figure out where the chat is on here. That's probably why I'm surprised, because I can't see any of the questions. So if you could forgive me here for a second here. Let's see. of a ludite when it comes to this technology stuff. I'm just not very good with it. Where in the hell? One second, guys. Uh, don't ever think this. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm overthinking it myself right now. Where in the hell? You can go ahead and talk amongst yourselves if you want for a second here. Now I really am overthinking it. I'm not even doing what I have told you to do. That's how simple it is. I can't abide by my own rules right now. I know I can, but... I think I'm on the chat already here. Is it the uh, Facebook window? Is that all it is? Is that really just... I feel like a complete idiot now. I probably am. Okay, now I find... Alright. <coughs> okay, Alex, okay. Let me read your question here and think it through. So Alex writes, Can you clarify what you mean embrace the state, society as it is today? Do you mean for us to just not worry about and focus on our personal goals? Okay, well, I understand what you're saying. I was, I was actually, like... I was actually thinking the same thing not too long ago, and I understand exactly. Uh, basically, it's okay to worry, just don't let it get to you, all right? Be able to control that emotion. I worry about things all the time, but I know that there really isn't anything to worry about. It's this constant paradox. It's like this infinite loop that we find ourselves in every day, every hour. We're constantly in a state of being, and as long as we recognize we're in a state of being, then there's nothing to worry about. It's not really worry, it's just being aware. 
basically in this universe, awareness is the highest currency you can strive for. And as long as you're aware, then nothing can you. If you know that if you stick your foot in a fire that you get burned, then you know not to stick your foot in a fire. You know, it's really that... It sounds complicated, but it's it's really that simple. Does anybody else have any questions, or does that need any more clarification? How are they doing that one, Alex? I know it's a little bit of a delay. That's probably a good thing, though. I think you're right, bud. I think uh, everybody's going to have their own little way to connect this idea. And it's a very simple idea, and it can be communicated through anything. Art, film, uh, natural language. I'd be careful with natural language, though, because natural language is really meant for and It's not meant for us to really communicate directly with. You'll find that you'll get frustrated a lot of times if you're just trying to have a conversation using natural language is slippery. Uh, that's basically, if someone's a very good wordsmith, they can basically get away with saying anything, and it means everything. Okay, Alan, I understand what you're saying here, too. Uh, does that kind of moral responsibility, if you break law, though? Yes, but that morality is your own. You create your own morality as something that's objective to a particular system. Overall, on Earth, there are ethics that we can teach each other, you know. There are ethics to, ethics to a moment. If you, when you live inside a moment, you really don't need to know ethics, though, because you're there already. Something either feels right or it feels wrong. Feel it with your soul inside. And I know some of you don't believe in the soul, and that's fine. Find something else that you can believe in. But once you're there, you don't need to believe in anything because you're already in the moment. Uh, and if I need more clarification on it, let me know. Uh, I can keep talking about that. Anybody else have any questions? Any comments, concerns? Uh, there's nothing to worry about. Just about... Tell me now because like, I'm not going to be here and for another... Actually, I have... looks like I have... Way too much time now. That's a great point, Joyce. You're only going to know what a bad... There, there are... There are... There's basically... A government teacher in high school who I didn't really get along with that much, but she said something that really spoke to me. Uh, and she said... There's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And right now, most people only see the letter of the law. It says, drive 65 miles an hour. We all know that in spirit, that law is just saying, don't speed at 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. You're going to know if you look instinctually through your soul whether or not that that law is good or bad, you know laws that are just stupid, you know, like, oh, well, I mean, that, somebody throw out a dumb law, there's hundreds of them, there's tons of stupid laws out there, and people know those are stupid, and those are usually the ones that aren't enforced, it's like sodomy laws in Texas, I'm like, what the hell are you going to do, you're going to break, seriously, and those are the laws that are usually unenforceable anyways, so if they're unenforceable, you can go ahead and break them if you want, it just is up to you. Do you want to sodomize someone or not? I mean, you should, probably shouldn't do it in public. I don't know how you get away with that. Maybe you have a way of getting away with that. I don't want to sodomize anybody gross to me, but it's up to you, really. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even rather talk about that. Uh, let's come up with another dumb law. Somebody, someone has a dumb law out there. What's the dumbest law you can think of? Then we can work through that. Anybody got anything? Somebody's got to have a dumb law. There's tons of them out there. Throw me a bone here. Throw me anything. It doesn't have to be a bone. But yes, uh, Joyce, you do have to have a moral responsibility that relates to you, but that's not going to be something that I can tell you 
That's something that you have to come up with. I think that's pretty freeing, to be honest. When you can basically define your own reality based on your morality. Just don't try to break the ethics of the, of the earth, or when you find out the ethics of the universe, don't don't break those either, because there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way, but there's a best way for you, depending on where you are. Say, what's the ethics of the situation I'm in right now? What situation do I find myself in? Any moment, you can ask yourself, does this feel right or does this feel wrong? All you're doing is going off your instincts. Trust your instincts. You really need to trust your instincts right now because everybody's overthinking everything. Just think about how much crap there. there's so many books and films, there's so much stuff on YouTube. It's like you could watch all the Justin Bieber videos on YouTube, but do you really want to do that? I mean, I mean that maybe that works for you, but I sure as hell don't want to watch Justin Bieber all day long. I don't know who I want to watch all day long. I that doesn't speak to me. But you know, there's some things I do that are completely crazy to you or to someone else, but they feel fine to me. And you can't let people get to you. I mean, that's when they really win. I mean, the state, what does the state work off of? The state's always trying to make us fear things, you know. But that's all intentional. The state is, is testing our will, will. And, you know, most most libertarians and most liberty people, freedom people in this community, I hate to define anybody, they're just people. Most people be free. And they don't want to fear. So don't fear. Because if you do, then they've gotten to you. Then they've won. What about this? But anyways, anybody else have any comments? I've been speaking here. Questions? Anything? George, are you out there? You got anything to say? Are you listening in? George is the puppet master today, guys. Y'all should all be thanking him for putting this together. He did a great job. And, uh... It's pretty cool. I actually haven't had any time to tune into any of this stuff today, so uh, this was my first. Uh, but I think I'm gonna check some other stuff out if I have some time today. Anybody else? Guys, uh, I'm gonna s tune off here. I'll stick around. For the, uh, Nobody else says anything. <coughs> <clears throat> we can get out of here. And just go live our lives. Just be peaceful, man. Just uh, Next time you see I come in peace. Just chunk the deuce. That's all you gotta do. All you need is love. If you really want to know the secret, that's all that governs the universe is. But you're not going to know this until you get to that state of being where you're completely at peace with the universe. And I'm not quite there, and I don't know if, I mean, if anybody is, go ahead and tell me. I know it's going to be good times. Anybody have anything to fill this uh, void of silence? Take a look outside, man. That's where it's at for me. Uh, you know, some people find solace on their computer. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. And everybody just wants to be free.
Whoa! Bird at the window there. He obviously wouldn't think it very much, was he? Can't blame the bird. Just gotta blame the herd sometimes. There's some enemy guys. Come on, I'm getting bored here. Hopefully, if I've done this presentation right, nobody's at their computer anymore, They're just doing whatever the hell they want to do. Don't listen to me. What the hell do I know? It's up to you. The choice is always yours. You got to go out and do whatever the hell you want. But just do the right thing, or the wrong thing. Just know that you'll pay one way or the other. It's all karma. Joyce, you're right. I wasn't seeing that chat. That's funny. Oh, shit. Hold on. Oh, God. What did you miss, Lydia? You missed a lot of stuff. But uh, this thankfully should be uh, archived, I believe. Uh, to the best of my knowledge. What do I see in the future for the next? Uh, I think a lot of good things are going to happen. I think a lot of people are coming to this realization right now. I know a lot of my friends are. And I think people are just, you're going to see a lot of creativity at ForkFest. A lot of ideas, a lot of free things, people out there just doing what they want to do. And we're going to have to, like, just accept people for who they are and look at their ideas. And if we don't like them, don't hate. Just procreate with the ideas that you do like. That's all you can do. Just do the best that you can do. It is a sign, Lydia. It's always a sign. Look for the signs when you need them, but don't look for a sign, you know. And for the most part, I think most of y'all, and some of y'all probably know everything. Maybe some of y'all need a sign. If you need a sign, look for it. Fine, so be it. Okay, we got the archive link up here. Uh... At Agora IO. Nice, I like that. A new animal. We are a new, we are just becoming all it is. Uh, we, who knows what we are, but I think, I think we're humans. I think you're right, but I think, like, basically there are those who want to be free, controlled. And some of you might hate me for saying this, but those who are being controlled right now, and those who are free, have always wanted to be free. Because 
you are what you are meant to be, and you are being now. You might just not know who you are. And I don't, I don't think any of us know who we are. It's just like, just know the moment you're in. Know your place in the universe. And right now, our place in the universe is a free one. Just be free. Just be free. And honestly, like I was saying, like language is such a slippery, it's basically, it's a creative art form, language. And anybody can be defined as a communist, a democrat, a populist, a fascist, a liberal, a conservative, and so forth. Because we're all those at different, at different moments in time. If you really want to study time, study physics, the space-time continuum. No space. You got your three dimensions, which most people are just living in right now, and then you got your fourth dimension, which is time. And it's all linked up to black holes. And there are black holes in time. And right now we're in a time warp. You are your own grandfather. Some of you. Some of you are your own grandfather. I know. It sounds kind of bizarre to say, but that's the situation we find ourselves in right now. Very bizarre, strange times. It's a good time to be alive, though. Don't worry about it. Just know who you are. In the moment. You don't really know who you are. You don't really know anything. Sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I covered that one, though. What were you asking again, Joyce, about about how do we tell if a law is moral or not? Basically, yeah. I think, I think uh, Sean is getting experience. We have to experience our morality in the moment, and when we're doing that, we will know whether or not something is right or wrong. Morality on Earth is completely subject. Uh, morality on Earth, I would rather say, is completely subjective. It's completely individualized, but the ethics are objective within the system. Like I was saying, there, if there's a right or wrong moment anywhere in the universe. The hard part rules, and how can I bend them? Or can I break them? Some rules were meant to be broken, others were meant to be bent, and some rules were meant to be... But then again, that's the pain that I'm getting back to. And right now, some people know everything, some people know nothing. And I think the people that are just becoming into being are the human beings. Those who are reaching their full potential already are human. And those who already have, have nothing. Think about everything in terms of a paradox and it becomes clear instantly. A good book that explains the paradoxical nature of everything, really, is a book by uh, Douglas Hofstadter called uh, Godel, Escher, and Bach, and he basically relates the work of Godel, the mathematician, uh, Bach, the musician, and M.C. Escher, the artist, and how in each of those three experiences, through art, mathematics, mathematics, wait, art? Wait. Art? mathematics and music you can find loops in everything infinite loops there's an infinite tonal loop in music uh and mathematics godel's theorem uh that to describe a system to understand something you have to step outside of that you have to, you have to reach a level of objectivity and by the time you step outside of a system you're already beyond what you've evolved. The only way to get out of a system is to grow through transition. And that transition from being controlled to being free can be a struggle, but only if you make it so. If you know your place, you're supposed to be doing, if you're living in the moment, then there is no struggle. You just are. You're completely at peace. The real challenge is the balance. 
And the only way, honestly, that I think you're going to do that is by doing whatever you want to do. And that may mean that you need to just tune me out right now and turn to think about this, or smoke a bowl, or go raise the flag on a pole. Or you can troll, you know? Uber troll. I'm not the Uber mensch, I'm the Uber troll. I think anybody who knows me knows that. That's my problem, is that very few people actually understand. But I'm okay with that. That's just what I am meant to be doing. Is to be misunderstood, and then that misunderstanding people can understand. <clears throat> Time is an illusion, the past only memory individually. The future doesn't ever come into being. The only time that actually exists is right now. It's gone. Is that your own quote, bud, or did you find that somewhere else? I really like that explanation. I can dig that. Uh, and you can make anything out of time and you can make time into an illusion or you can make time seem like an eternity and right now it's an anachronism for mankind they're going to realize that eventually time is going to come to a standstill for everyone and they're going to go oh my god why have I been wasting all this time but they really haven't wasted any of it that's the beauty of it all is that they have all the time in the world the new world, you know, we're entering the new age. There's nothing to worry about with 2012. Nothing's going to happen. People are just going to realize, what have I been worrying about all this time? There may be a few bad things that happen. They're already, I, mean, I think the worst has already come into being. Time is just a manifestation of our own insanity, and we have to become in, unsane to become sane again. Time. We have to go back in time. We're going to all become time travelers very soon if we aren't already. And we're all doing it. We're constantly traveling, traveling through time. We just don't realize that we have the time travel at any given moment. I would recommend going out and time traveling right now. I mean, just do whatever you want. I mean, you're going to be time traveling whether you want to or not. That's impossible. We cannot control time. We can only know that it exists and choose to believe in it or not. To know it exists or to manifest it into existence. And we can really do that with any concept. But now, you're not going to be able to sit here and turn lead into gold if you don't know how to do that. But that's something you're going to be able to feel how to do. If you want a new car, though, go out and get a new car. You can get a new car today if you want. If you know. The question is, do you? It'll either feel right or it won't. Everybody's unique. I mean, everybody has something they want to do today. But <clears throat> exactly, bud. This can all be... <laughs> terms of the glass, you know. People always say these phrases and they don't even realize what they're talking about. They're really figuring things out. Uh, for me, uh, for most of my life, uh, half full. I'm definitely an optimist. But I know there's a lot of pessimists out there, and I've become a pessimist at times, and I've also become a realist. Three at various times. Otherwise, we'll go completely insane. Oh, it absolutely is, Sean. I mean, if that's what speaks to you, then the glass is the illusion. In fact, you can do all kinds of illusionary stuff through it most of the time if you if you make the right type of glass.
But yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's gonna be a lot of people later today, Joyce, that are talking about agorism. I know there's a guy talking later today about agorism as it relates to construction. And I think you can be an agorist anything. I know that. I practice agor. I try to practice agorism in everything I do. And I think we all do, regardless if we want to or not, because we have the choice to be free. To The question is, do you want to be free or do you want to be a slave? I think you want to be free. In this case, if you really want to be free, then be free. There's nothing I can do to set you free. You can only set yourself free. Embrace your... That's all I mean when I say embrace the state. Some of you might not be able to embrace the government. And if that's the case, then you do what you think is right. Only fight if you have to, though. Because fighting is kind of a for us people. In this fighting alone, we have to do all kinds of things. Everybody has to be their selves. And just, just know that the people who are being enslaved right now, the only reason they're enslaved is because... At some point, they either wanted to be, they want to be, or in some future time, they want to be a slave. But the only person to worry about, really, to really, really worry about, you should only be worrying yourself. When you worry yourself sick about yourself, you won't be worried anymore. So you won't be sick anymore. Your body is a self-healing machine. It's only a vessel for the soul. If you even know the soul exists. I do, but some people don't. I tend to fashion myself as a postmodernist. And uh, postmodernism is basically where we're at right now. We're, we're as modern as we're ever going to be. So we can either stay here or we can be anything. Stay in this meaningless world we're in where, I mean, it's very hard to be aware of anything or we can move beyond and we can really do it. Again, it's all about time, though. Any given moment in time, we can be anything we want to be. We already know everything. Most of us are know-it-alls. Libertarians I used to hang out with, they thought they knew everything. And the thing is, they do, for the most part. They obviously don't know everything, but they know a lot of stuff. And they know more than they want to get done, what they need to get done. It's okay to debate, but, you know, I think free people are tired of debating. They're just doing now. They're making things. They're making new... They're creating new debates. They're creating new ways of doing things, new ways of time travel, new sciences, new mathematics, you know. Everything is neo this, neo that. There's neo conservatives. There's neo liberals. There's neo... Act in the Matrix. Who is neo? I mean, the Matrix is basically giving us everything we need to know about the universe, to say, some of us are. We're still in the Matrix, and some of us who are aware that we're in the Matrix realize that we can do anything, and we will do anything. That's the really fun. That's incredibly exciting. I think we live in the most exciting time ever. But again, I'm, some people think we live in the worst time ever. If you're tired of suffering, though, if you're tired of all this pain, don't suffer. All you need is love. Any other comments, concerns, questions? Thoughts? Models?
Yeah, you can put whatever you want in this estate. Don't embrace it. Just do what you want to do. And don't worry, be happy. Exactly. Thanks uh, for the bandana thing. The acceptance of what is is the key. Fucking all the secrets of the universe we're in. And beyond. You know, we've discovered the nature of the universe and everything. We discovered the nature of infinity. The, the tricky part is remember. The human experience is the lowest existence in the universe, just about, other than being a complete robot, which most people are. It's also the most freeing. The robots are even happy right now. They want to be controlled. I can tell that. I can see they're happier than ever. Oh, little bots. Intelligent bots are so happy right now, it's not even funny. At least in Austin. I don't know. Austin's kind of a weird place, though. Ten-year-olds, I mean... A lot of children, that's why you need to have parents, because the parents need to teach the children they don't know everything, because they do. And the children need to teach the parents that don't know anything, because they don't. And the Matrix is cool. Just go with the flow. Right now, the flow is all uphill. Exactly. Good observations. Like you guys are free. All the hard work's been done. I can guarantee you, most of us bring our lives. I mean, it's just like it's hard to remember because we've been around for so long. We've been alienated for so long. And some of us haven't even been alienated. Some of us have been happy and lucky our entire lives. Oh, children are definitely very wise. They're crazy wise. And a lot of adults are know-it-alls. So we need adults and we need children and we need everything in between. And we need babies and we need old people. The old teach the young and the young teach the old. It's that little symbiotic relationship you know, that you very rarely see these days. That's how the family should work. It should be a community giving and you're getting back in one way or another. But most people are just standing still. They figure something out and they sit on it and sit on it and sit on it and sit on it. Pretty. They go, oh, we discovered a new way to create oil out of thin air. Well, then what are you doing sitting on it? Why don't you just make that oil? Secret. But my God, sitting on it's not going to accomplish anything, is it? Maybe it is for you. I mean, it obviously is if you're doing it. But it's going to lead to bad things, at least here on Earth. But hey, we're on the Earth right now. Don't get, com don't get, uh, don't fly over to... Alpha Centauri, unless you know how to already. If you're an alien, you can probably do just about anything. But then again, you probably don't know that. A lot of us are just, we've been alienated by society, but we're okay with that. And now, But now we're ready to be free. It's about time we had some freedom in our lives. We always have had freedom. We always have been free to choose. And we always have been free, but we've also been a slave. The problem is, I could go on and on and on arguing in circles, but I, we really wouldn't be getting her. We are just stuck in that loop, but embrace the loop, then. Don't even think about it. Not all of us. Some of us already know all this. Just be very wary of telling this information... To slaves all at once because slaves have so little awareness of their slavery they're blissfully ignorant that they don't want to hear this stuff they want to be slaves and they're gonna they're gonna be a slave until they finally come to their own realization so like, worry about yourself and the rest will take care of itself your own reality and it will become an actuality Okay, we got about five or six more minutes left. Any other questions? Concerns, comments, observations? About the, the nature of everything? I already said it. That. Very wise beings. Any know-it-alls out there already figured it all out?
by the way, most of our, I mean, it depends on how old you are, but I think a lot of baby boomers are kidults. They're a completely different animal. It's hard, to, it's hard to communicate with my with my parents sometimes, to be honest. But it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of fun to kind of figure out how they think. Because, like, my parents, they definitely think. And that's just been this process of going through, like, how do I even talk to these people? But I haven't talked to them my entire lives. So it's just like I have to... Don't overthink it. The prize is in the pudding. There's a silver lining to everything. And everybody's got a heart. You just gotta let it shine right through. We have to shine right now. great talking to you all uh sounds like you know everything i told you already you just might have not realized you knew it or if you did then this was of no use to you if you didn't listen to me which i wouldn't expect you to if i if i was listening to something i already knew i'd go insane and a lot of people go insane when they're they seem to live in the moment so i think i've said it all if anybody has any closing remarks Otherwise, uh, who knows, maybe I'll write all this stuff down into a new, new libertarian man. That'd be, that'd be great to honor the, honor the word of, uh, Samuel Conkin, because I think that man had a lot of it figured out. And he had it all figured out, I think. It's just a little communication piece that we're always figuring out throughout time. And someday I might meet Samuel Conkin and I'll be able to tell him, look, you're an inspirational being. And now it's time to go inspire. As they say at the University of Texas, uh, what starts? I think we're changing the world, guys. That's at least what I know. Take it easy, man. Peace, love, and happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Love, be free. And that's all there is to tranquility. All right. Good little conference. Sounds like good things are happening. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's been an honor speaking in front of you and learning from you. George? By George, we did all this together. Thank you, Sean. George, Bud. Florian, if I'm, if I'm forgetting anybody. Alright, I'm going to get off here. Take it easy, guys. Peace.